Hi guys and welcome to this weekly horoscope for Monday the 7th of March going through until Sunday the 13th of March 2022. Thanks for joining me. It's a pleasure to be with you today as always. I'm going to give you a rundown of what's happening this week. So I'll go through each day to see what the planets are doing, how they interact with one another and what energy that brings up. And the point of these horoscopes is that you know what the energy is all about so that you can use it to your advantage and have the best time possible. So this week looks amazing. The good news is it's a lot quieter and it's a lot more easy to manage than last week was. Last week we had Mars and Venus going into Aquarius. They both changed signs. Mars is the male principle. It's the planet of drive and desire and ambition. And Venus is love, beauty, creativity, new beginnings. And they're both personal planets, so they affect you very strongly. And I personally felt that change into Aquarius of both those signs to be super, super intense. There was a lot of conflict going on in terms of the ideas. It was a little bit all over the place. So I feel that things calmed down a lot this week. And we also have a lot of Earth, the, the element of Earth coming into the chart. So that means you feel that both feet are firmly planted on the ground. You're still inspired in terms of your thinking and looking at, at how your actions influence other people, but you're not so so um, um, thrown by it. Because last week with this change, I feel like it was so intense that there was a lot of confusion and you may have felt like you were in limbo a little bit. So starting with Monday the 7th of March, we've got the moon in Taurus. Taurus is a fixed earth sign. So that's very much responsible for you feeling, okay, I've kind of landed here. Things are okay. I know how to deal with any situation. And it conjuncts Uranus and Taurus. Uranus is the planet of the miraculous and unexpected. So if anything comes along that you hadn't planned on, you're not going to be thrown by that. You'll approach the situation and say, okay, this is what it is. I'll deal with it. I'll handle it. And it's very undramatic and uh, very practical. So you're focused on results. You're focused on being productive rather than going into your feelings about certain issues um, and having this huge emotional response. So the Taurus moon then sextiles Jupiter, the lucky planet, the sun, your identity, and Neptune, the water planet of dreams and intuition, all of which are in Pisces. So Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac. It's a water sign that's very much about spirituality and your intuition and that connection with something otherworldly. It's like, what is the big picture here? What are my dreams about? What do I feel? What is my higher self saying? So it's a very personal kind of inner process and Jupiter expands everything. So feelings are heightened, but I feel it's not that uh, you get lost in your feelings. It's more of a tool. It's your intuition guides you. And then the combination with the Taurus moon means you're able to take your intuitive insights and to translate them into practical action. So it's, it's nice, it's almost like you're being given a compass here so that you can check the direction you're going in and whether you're happy with it or not. And then finally, we've got the Taurus moon forming a square with Saturn and Aquarius. Saturn is the planet of the rules and structure and what is, what you can't argue with. And in Aquarius, the air sign of the teacher, the humanitarian, there may still be a little bit of conflict, but it doesn't make you feel so thrown or like, uh, confused. I don't know what's going on, which is what I feel um, last week, Friday, Saturday and Sunday were all about. So on Monday, the 7th of March, you start the new week feeling super well equipped and able to handle whatever comes your way without a lot of drama. And um, luckily, some of the conflict that was present last week, it starts to dissipate now and you feel a lot calmer. Good luck stems from your imagination and your intuition. So make sure that you honor those feelings and insights and trying to force something or being pushy, that's no longer of interest to you. So if you really have to exert yourself to get something, you're going to back away from that naturally. So your part in any potential conflict is gone. You're no longer interested in it. And that doesn't mean you're a pushover, but you're not so willing to engage with things which don't have a positive outcome. So it's a kind of natural self-protection here on Monday. On Tuesday, the 8th of March, we've got the Taurus moon. So you still feel grounded. You still feel connected with earth and nature. So just enjoying the simple things in life is going to give you a lot. That squares Mercury and Aquarius, so the communication planet. 
in the sign of the humanitarian, there's friction between that. So you don't like things which are overly complicated. You want things to make sense. But again, I don't feel like there's a huge um, amount of irritability or a lack of patience involved here. And the Taurus moon also trines Pluto and Capricorn. So that's nice because it allows you to kind of go with the flow and to say, okay, certain circumstances are outside my control and that's okay. I can accept that and I can deal with what comes my way. So you're much more easygoing here at the beginning of the week. The moon enters Gemini at 7.40 in the evening. So now the moon is going from the fixed Earth sign Taurus into Gemini, an air sign, which is all about expressing yourself and having fun and um, sharing your ideas and opinions makes you more sociable, it makes you more interested in having a good time and being funny and reading and learning. The Gemini moon also trines Mars. You know what I'm going to say now, don't you? <laughs> the Gemini moon then trines Mars and Venus in Aquarius. So now we've got a lot of air coming into the chart. It's really good for, your, for, for someone who is um, looking to be inspired, inventors, scientists, people who are thinking about writing their first book, a novel, or some sort of self-help guide. So if you have had writer's block or if you felt uninspired recently, Tuesday is going to put an end to that and the ideas are going to be flowing really nicely. But because the big shift of Mars and Venus happened last week, I think what doesn't come along with that inspiration and all those ideas is that conflict that we had. I get a strong sense that this is a lot calmer and a lot more straightforward. Yeah. So with all of that said, there may be some unexpected opportunity which appears on Tuesday that requires you to act fast. If you want to make big changes, it's a good idea to seize that moment. And if there's a trade off, Either So if you, you've got an option, either I hop on this opportunity and make it happen for myself, or I just let it slide by because I want to be calm and I want to relax. I would suggest that you jump on the opportunity, even if it feels somewhat rushed or too good to be true, because it isn't. It's a genuine opportunity. Also, it's a great day for singles looking for love because romance is in the air and there's great potential to meet someone new. On Wednesday, the 9th of March, we've got the Gemini moon forming a sextile with Chiron and Aries. So a sextile is, is two um, planets interacting in a way that's positive. The, the energies kind of blend together. So Chiron and Aries is your self-interest. It's your focus on personal healing and what you want to do for yourself. The Gemini moon is fun loving and optimistic and it likes looking towards the future. So simply what can I do to enjoy myself today how can I have fun if that's socializing or going to the cinema or um, journaling or whatever that it is that you enjoy try and build that into your day because you'll get a lot out of it plus Gemini is about ideas and communication so you can kind of teach yourself things by expressing yourself you know when you when you're talking and something kind of shifts and you're like oh did I just say that <laughs> It's that kind of moment where you really realize what's going on for you by expressing yourself. The Gemini moon also squares Jupiter in Pisces. So Jupiter in Pisces continues to kind of blow up the spiritual aspect of your life and your intuition and your feelings continue to guide you. So with Chiron and Jupiter here on Wednesday, if you listen to your gut, you can't really go wrong. Mercury, the communication planet, enters Pisces as well on Wednesday. So that's kind of a big deal because you're not so interested in, in um, the rules or structures. What's most important to you now are um, your spiritual truth, your connection with your higher self and the direction you feel you're going in life. And there's a very nice um, ability to kind of take stock and to say, hey, yeah, this works for me. I like this. I'm going to keep going. It's really positive. So Wednesday is a much quieter day, which sees you super inspired creatively. Things continue to feel settled and manageable. And that gives you time to take care of mundane, everyday demands like chores, running errands, getting your calendar organized, 
or even simply reading a book. So it's, it's a calm, nice, quiet, easy day where you can do whatever makes you feel rested and at ease. The communication planet in Pisces allows you to take a break from reality by daydreaming or by reading something or watching something or meditating or doing yoga. You know, um, sometimes there's a desire to escape. You know, if life gets too much um, or if things are really stressful and difficult, for some people, there's a desire to just kind of press the pause button and to, to check out for a little bit. And of course, that can be done in a negative way. You know, if you're if you're engaging in negative behavior or if you decide to take some sort of a substance to check yourself out, that's obviously not going to help you in the long in the long run. But in a positive way, meditating and doing things that kind of feed your imagination and your intellect that on this day is is restorative, but also it's going to be inspirational. New ideas come through that process. So you're actually being very productive by allowing yourself to kind of daydream. The the image that's coming to mind, you know, uh, what was it? Harry Potter, the 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 um, head wizard of the school, Dumbledore. He's got this pool thing, and he's got he can pull his thoughts out of his mind with his wand, and that's what I feel you can do. You're able to just kind of pull out these negative ways of thinking and these negative threads that have been making you uncomfortable and that then creates a space within you to have a new idea a positive idea pop in so wednesday looks amazing thursday the 10th of march we have the gemini moon forming a square with the sun and neptune in pisces so a square creates friction between two things so the Gemini moon is your continued ability to have fun and to express yourself and to tell jokes even and to write. And the square with the sun and Neptune, it gives you a greater focus on things of the real world because there's friction there. And the sun and Neptune are that dream state, particularly in Pisces. And the Gemini moon is about real life conversations. So um, engaging with things that are practical is going to feel more inspirational and interesting. The Gemini moon also trines Saturn in Aquarius. So yeah, the focus becomes, you're, you're focusing now on the external stuff, friends, books, magazines, TV shows, what's going on in your environment. You're not looking within as much. So if you're trying to discover something about yourself, if you're meditating and you're, 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 you're looking for some sort of moment of clarity then doing it earlier in the week is going to work more effectively and finally the gemini moon also queen cuxes pluto in capricorn that's really good because anything that comes up unexpectedly you'll understand it very quickly you know when something happens in life and afterwards you're like oh something's off here this doesn't quite sit right and then you have to kind of think about it to make sense of what actually happened Thursday is the opposite. As soon as something appears, you immediately know what it's about. You immediately know whether you think it's good or right or wrong, and you're able to then work with it. So you're very switched on. And again, I would therefore encourage you to listen to your gut feelings and your intuition. Um, on Thursday, you may have some amazing ideas. That's the big highlight of the day. Um, and You'll want to share those ideas with other people immediately because the moon is in Gemini. <laughs> the best way to actually work on your ideas is to give them physical shape and structure rather than diluting them and sharing them with other people and then listening to their feedback and then it all becomes a bit muddled. I would suggest that you resist that urge to share absolutely everything and instead you get busy and you work on your ideas and you flesh them out a bit. On Friday, the 11th of March, we've got the moon going into Cancer at 8.24 in the morning. Oh, <clears throat> so what I said about Thursday is that you're now focused on the external stuff and that earlier in the week, it was about the inner world. With the moon going into Cancer now on Friday, the focus is back on the inner world. So really the only day in this week where you're, you're focused um, outwardly is Thursday. You can do a lot of 
kind of inner work and because of that you can understand yourself much better this week the the moon in cancer first of all the moon rules cancer so it's a very strong energy and influence because the moon is very happy in that placement and cancer is about the home it's about your roots it's about what you love who you feel close to it's about confiding in yourself i suppose and other people it's really about home life the domestic sphere the cancer moon then squares chiron in aries chiron in aries is your desire to heal anything about yourself that is unhealed and because it's connected to the cancer moon you may want to see what you can heal in existing relationships that kind of causes you problems. Um, so if there's been an argument or conflict last week or um, yeah, that doesn't quite sit well with you, you're able to amend and fix that on Friday. The Cancer Moon also trines Mercury in Pisces. The dreams, the dreams are huge and inspirational. Sometimes you, you um, daydream or you want to kind of imagine something and it's flimsy and it feels kind of thin and nothing. And other times you close your eyes and it's like, boom, like a whole movie starts playing. And that's what happens on Friday. Your imagination is so fired. The Cancer Moon also sextiles Uranus and Taurus. That imagination is the solution to any practical problems that you may face. Not going to the library and saying, how did other people handle this? Go within and say, how do I want to handle this? That's going to serve you much more. And then Equincux is Mars and Venus in Aquarius. I just want to talk about that a little bit because Mars is drive and desire, like I said. In Aquarius is I want to learn, I want to teach, I want to do something for other people. Venus in Aquarius is I want to come up with some amazing new ideas that can benefit others. I want to do something. So it's really positive, right? But looking at this and um, just going from the week I've had, I'm kind of scared of these two. <laughs> the The shift was so, so dramatic that I'd like you to really look after yourself and to say, okay, just because these ideas are, are pushing me and it feels so intense, it doesn't mean that I have to completely lose myself or rush off to do these things that feel super urgent. I can still take care of myself and everything's okay. You know, nothing has really changed here, but there's a lot going on internally. So ideally, with the moon in Cancer and these ongoing ideas, it mitigates the, the conflict or the possible intensity of it because Cancer is the home and it's relaxation. So I'd like you to work on Friday to deliberately slow things down and to kind of go into homebody mode. That's going to feel very comfortable and you'll get a lot out of that. So self-care, relaxation, eating well, sleeping, exercising, you know, lying on the couch with someone you love. Make those your hobbies because you'll get a lot out of those on Friday and it'll feel amazing. Finding something good to watch is going to feel great. It's all about recharging your batteries on Friday. So the, the only thing I would suggest, if you do want to go out or if you if you feel like, okay, I am recharged and I feel comfortable, I, <laughs> I do want to actually go out and do something, it's, it's a good opportunity because you're in such a good space. If you want to do anything outside of the home and you're single, I would suggest that you go on a date because the energy is really good. You're presenting yourself in a very positive way. You're calm. Your emotions are very accessible. Um, and because of all that, it supports love and romance. And um, yeah, if, if you want to meet someone new, Friday supports that. And it's really likely that you meet someone who's like-minded and who you get on with very well. On Saturday, the 12th of March, we've got the Cancer Moon now forming a square with Chiron and Aries. So my self-healing my needs, very important to you still. It trines Jupiter, the Sun, and Neptune in Pisces. So now it's my healing, my imagination, my spiritual truth. And it's like, I don't need anything else other than me because I'm home. I've arrived in myself. It quincuxes is Saturn and Aquarius. Other people support me. Other people like me. And it sextiles Uranus and Taurus. I can handle whatever comes my way. So it's like easy breezy, lovely everything's okay in the world on saturday the 12th so you still have the opportunity to relax and unwind here any issues that 
could come up are best dealt with as a team. So either with friends or family or anyone who supports you or in conjunction with your higher self, there's absolutely no need to feel alone or unsupported on Saturday the 12th. It's a really nice day. Sunday the 13th of March, we've got the Cancer Moon opposing Pluto and Capricorn and it trines Neptune and Pisces. So again, you've got that emotional compass that says, I know how to deal with this because my intuition is really helping me out in this situation. The Sun in Pisces conjuncts Neptune in Pisces, 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 water, water, water. I exist as much on the spiritual realm with my higher self as I do on this physical plane in my body. And the moon then enters Leo at 9.32 in the evening. So on Sunday night, all of this emotional um, home body kind of stuff shifts and you become much more focused on having fun. And again, looking at the, at the external circumstances, at the outside world. So I would say, with the exception of Thursday, this whole week is this amazing inner process where you can feel totally at home in yourself. Yeah, I like it. So on Sunday, um, the, the home stuff and all the water, Pisces, Pisces, it goes to an extreme now and you may go into total hermit mode. So on the downside of hermit mode is obviously that you're on your own <laughs> and you miss opportunities for new love. On the plus side, you can really fall in love with yourself as such on a spiritual level and gain some amazing insights about yourself. So if, if you're trying to understand yourself better, if you're working on spiritual growth, Sunday is your day to do that. With the moon going into Leo at the end of the day, the energy dissipates and things really shift gears going into next week. So you become more focused on um, real world opportunities. So like I said, if you're trying to have that moment of understanding or that light bulb going off, that Eureka aha moment, Sunday is the day to make that happen for yourself. So that's what I get for you this week. I love it. It looks so positive. Um, if you'd like a personal reading with me, please get in touch with me via my website. It's gregoryscott.com. On the front page, click on book your reading. There's a button that says book your reading. Click on that to order your reading with me. In my personal readings, I use astrology, the tarot, numerology, and my intuition. I combine all of them. And if you have any questions about your life purpose, um, as it relates to career, or as it is separate from career, family, finances, um, relationships, love, uh, personal development, communication, institutions, travel, hopes and dreams, spirituality and spiritual growth, anything at all really. If you want to look at what's coming up in future, what the future trends are, um, I look at the progress charts and the transits for that. Also, it's really nice to do a solar return chart around someone's birthday because that kind of gives me the themes for the coming year. Um, and I also look at astrocartography to look at different locations on the planet and how each location is going to influence you. So if you're thinking of moving and you're like, okay, where's the best place for me to go? Astrocartography is really amazing for that. So if you're interested in any of those things, please do get in touch with me for a personal reading. If you like this video, then give it a thumbs up. Please hit subscribe and share the video online. Check out some of my other videos, the daily tarot readings that I do, the special astrology videos I do on the new moons and the full moons and the eclipses. Check those out. I hope you have a wonderful week. Let us know how you go in the comments. I always like to hear feedback about that. And please also let me know how you found the conflict of last week, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and if that was kind of uh, challenging and how you managed those, those obstacles. I'd be really interested to hear that. And also if I'm the only one who really found that very, very challenging last week, or if you had a similar experience. Have a wonderful week and I'll speak to you soon.